Hey there, my wedding planning friends, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer. I'm a wedding planner based in Montana, and I also am the owner of Velvet Bride, which is a wedding dress store here in Missoula, Montana. So today's video, we're going to talk all about wedding dresses. So I'm going to show you a few dresses in different styles and kind of explain pros and cons of each one, when you might want to wear each type of dress and hopefully help you find the wedding dress that is right for you. So I'm gonna show you a few different types of dresses and go over the different um, shapes and silhouettes that you'll expect to find when you go wedding dress shopping. However, the only time it's really helpful and necessary to know the names of the different shapes and styles of wedding dresses is really when you're trying to explain what you are liking once you've started the wedding dress process. Um, you'll find that a lot of different places and a lot of different places online and different stylists that you go to are all going to call similar dresses by different names. And that can get a little bit confusing and it really doesn't matter what you call a particular wedding dress unless you're trying to explain to a stylist what you were liking at a previous store. But again, they might describe a fit and flare as something different than what the previous store did and maybe describe a mermaid and a trumpet interchangeably. So what I like to do is break it down into basically two categories to make it a little bit easier. So you've got your fitted dresses and you have flowy dresses. So do you want to have a fitted gown that's going to show off your shape and your body a little bit more or do you want to have a flowier dress that's gonna have a fuller skirt, a little bit easier to move and not as form fitting. So once you have those two categories, we'll go into each one a little bit more specifically and kind of go through the names of different types of styles. But again, don't get too hung up on the names of each particular type of fitted dress and each type of flowy gown. So first one is going to be uh, what I would refer to as a fit and flare. So this is our first fitted gown. A fit and flare basically refers to pretty much any dress that is like the name would suggest, fitted and then flares at the bottom. Now this doesn't have to be flare as in like a mermaid, like it's gonna poof out. This is a very subtle fit and flare. And to me, a fit and flare is basically fitted through where the hips are and then just kind of flows out past the hips, much like this gown does here. A fit and flare is a great option if you want to have a fitted gown, but still have a little bit of mobility in the legs. As you'll see, it doesn't come down fitted quite as far as what like a trumpet and a mermaid would. So you still have a decent amount of mobility in the legs here. I think that fit and flares look great on all body shapes. Another disclaimer I wanna to touch on before moving into other shapes of wedding dresses is there is no right dress for a certain body type. I get asked all the time by brides when they come in, especially the first time trying on, before they've even put a wedding dress on, they'll ask me, what do you think will look good on my body? Or what would you choose for my body type? And while there are different types of dresses that you might read about, you might hear about that are good on different types of body types, there's not one particular type of dress that looks the best on one particular type of body type. So don't get too hung up or putting yourself in, in a particular box, especially before you start trying wedding dresses on. So like I said, I'll go through kind of some of the pros and cons of each type of dress but you won't fully know what's going to look best on your body until you start trying on wedding dresses and try on all of these different shapes and styles of wedding dresses. So here's our next fitted style. This is what I would refer to as a trumpet. Um, you will probably hear trumpet and mermaid used interchangeably, they are very similar. Uh, to me, a trumpet is basically anything that is fitted through the hips, down the thighs, but not all the way down to the knees. A mermaid would be something that is fitted a little bit further down to the knees, whereas this one, you can see where it kind of comes down right here. Obviously, this is a mannequin, so you can't see as well as you could if it was on a body, um, but it is fitted down past the hips, a little bit further onto the thighs, but not quite down to where the knees are, and then flows out. Trumpets are a great way to show off some curves, a great way to show off your body, and kind of a rule of thumb when it comes to any dress that is going to be large on the bottom. Typically, the larger the skirt, or the larger, larger the bottom of the dress, the smaller the waist looks. So a lot of times a trumpet is used for women that are wanting to show off and accentuate a smaller waist and be able to still have some sort of drama at the bottom. Same goes for a mermaid. A trumpet kind of gives you the best of both worlds when it comes to a fitted and some drama at the bottom, as it's not as far down as a mermaid. It's kind of that in-between of being a fitted and still have some fullness at the bottom. So you get a little bit of both with a trumpet. The next fitted style we have is what's referred to as a sheath or a column. Again, these are kind of interchangeable. And you might hear both of them used to describe the same dress, but basically a sheath or 
or column dress is a type of fitted gown that just sort of hangs off of the body. A lot of times you get this effect when it has a, a heavier fabric. Um, this is an embroidered lace, so it does have a little bit of a heavier feel, so it just kind of hangs on the body. You still get that fitted look, but it's not as tight as some of the other types of fitted gowns. Column or sheath gown is great on a lot of different types of body types. It can be a very elongating because it's not cutting you off at any point in your um, your hips, your thighs, or your legs. Especially if there's one with a defined waistline like this, it still gives you that um, defined waist. It still gives you a little bit of shape without it being super tight. So the final fitted gown I'm going to show you is what I would refer to as a mermaid. So similar to a trumpet, a mermaid typically comes down and fitted a little bit closer to the knees and then flows out. And I picked this particular dress to show a mermaid. Um, as most people, when they hear the word mermaid, they are thinking of a very fitted gown that poofs out at the bottom. And while that was a very popular style of mermaids, and there are still some of those out there currently, um, it doesn't have to be a very like fitted and then poof to be a mermaid. So this one, as you can tell, is not that way at all. It is fitted down throughout the knees, and then the seam is really where it flares out to become a mermaid. And it really just gives the illusion of a mermaid without actually being that very fitted and then poofy mermaid style. Another thing I want to point out is the seam line as it comes down into more of a V rather than a straight across line, which is very helpful to elongate the body and make the legs seem longer and it's just a much more flattering line when it comes to a mermaid as sometimes having that very drastic cutoff where the point at the point where it gets fitted to the point where it flares out or becomes poofy can be very drastic and can actually shorten the look of your body. Mermaids are great for very tall gals. Again, great to show off your curves. And like I mentioned before, the bigger the bottom, the smaller the waist. So it can really accentuate and give that kind of hourglass look. Okay, time to move on to our flowy dresses now. So you might hear a few different terms when referring to flowy dresses. A-line, princess cut, ball gown. Pretty much the only two that I really use that are kind of important to me at least and to help distinguish is A-line and ball gown. Ball gown is obviously going to be a much larger and fuller skirt and then A-line is still a very similar cut, very similar style, just not as full of a skirt. So when it comes to like a princess cut or any other type, it's not really that important to know the difference between those when you are trying on wedding dresses. So this is what I would refer to as a an A-line. So basically an A-line is fitted through the bodice and then at the natural waistline is where it kind of flows out and becomes a fuller skirt. A-lines are great for accentuating the waist. They are also obviously the most um, mobile. You have a lot of mobility in the legs here. You don't have to worry about it being too fitted and having uh, any restriction and being able to move your legs or dance. Um, super fun twirl ability, great photos. Something with a tool skirt is usually pretty light too, so a little bit easier to just walk in and kind of overall manage throughout the day. So I love a good A-line dress. So if you are somebody that wants to accentuate the waist and maybe not show off your entire body and feel a little bit more comfortable in a gown, an A-line could be a great option for you. Now, last but certainly not least, we have a ball gown. Now, a ball gown is similar to A-line in the sense that it typically has a fitted bodice and then at the natural waistline will flow out into a larger skirt. And the main difference between a ball gown and an A-line is just a larger skirt, as you can see on this one. And this particular dress has, this is what's called horse hair. This is a horse hair edge, so it gives a little bit of extra volume. A lot of ball gowns will have a horse hair trim on around the bottom. That just helps kind of maintain that large shape so that when you are walking and in photos, it maintains that large kind of bell shape to keep that ball gown skirt. Again, very similarly to an A-line, a ball gown is very flattering in the waistline. If you're not wanting to show off your curves or you're showing off your body too much, um, a ball gown is great. Accentuating the smallest point of your body and then giving you, again, that mobility and movement throughout the legs. A ball gown will probably be a little bit more difficult to walk in than an A-line as there's just a little bit more to work with, a little more, more to carry around, can be a little bit heavier, a little bit more difficult to use the restroom, all those types of things. So that's just something to keep in mind when weighing kind of the pros and cons of a ball gown. A ball gown, especially this one, <laughs> is sometimes a bit of a secret weapon. I have a lot of brides that come in and when I, if they've never tried anything on, one of my first questions is asking what they you know, are liking, what they're not liking, looking at photos, that sort of thing. And even before they try dresses on, so many of my brides come in and say, no ball gown, don't want anything too poofy. And I can't tell you the amount of times that I've had brides put one on because one minute someone entourage wanted them to where they wanted to just for fun as a just for fun dress and ended up purchasing 
this bad man right here. So the ball gowns are another style that I think can look great on any body type. Um, one thing I will say is with a ball gown and a very large skirt, if you are a petite bride, it can be a little bit overwhelming on a smaller frame. However, for the most part, a ball gown can always be a win. So hopefully this video helped explain a little bit more of the different types of um, wedding dress shapes and silhouettes, but like I mentioned before, don't get too caught up on the names of the different types of shapes and silhouettes when wedding dress shopping. And also don't pigeonhole yourself into one particular style because someone said that an A-line is best for pear shape and that's the style that you should get. Uh, you really won't know until you start trying wedding dresses on and knowing what looks good but also feels good on your body because that is also a very important factor when it comes to finding your wedding dress is how it feels and how it makes you feel when you look in the mirror. So keep that in mind when you're wedding dress shopping. Don't rule anything out until you have tried it on and realize that, hey, maybe that's not the dress for you. And don't limit yourself before you've given yourself the opportunity to at least try it. There are a lot of factors that go in to making a wedding dress feel and look good on you, such as the neckline, the waistline, the type of lace, the way that the seams are placed, the way a particular lace pattern lays across your bodice or your legs. So all those can come into play when it comes to finding a dress that fits you well and how it fits on your body, regardless of the shape. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we'll see you next week.